Hello, everybody out there. Welcome to the roundtable with uh, Slam Dance TV. We're here with the narrative shorts block Uno, one for you Americans. I'd like you guys to introduce yourself, your film, and then I want you to name one thing that you brought with you to Slam Dance in order to survive. <laughs> I'm Charlie Hidalgo, and I'm with a film called The Things You Think I'm Thinking. I brought like 10 jackets that I'm wearing every day. <laughs> uh, so it's 10 things to survive. My name is Sharon. I'm the director of The Things You Think I'm Thinking. The first thing that can, comes to mind is my water bottle, but I haven't been carrying it with me at all. What? Because I hate carrying things. Like, I just have my jacket. I don't even like bags. I have lots of pockets in my parka that work. Hi, Amanda Lovejoy Street. I'm the writer-director of Magic Bullet. I brought, like, a, an apothecary. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, very scared of getting ill, so I have a... <laughs> I love like um, like colloidal silver, turmeric, fresh ginger, <laughs> and I brought a loaf of gluten-free bread. <laughs> oh I'm Jordan. I made a movie called Clean Blood, and uh, I brought these boots, man. These boots are the oldest thing that I probably own. They look like they were like on fire for a minute. Like, let's, can we get a sh can we get down on the boots right here? Close up, oh insert God. on gross <laughs> shoes. Insert boots. <laughs> <laughs> you guys already had your first screening. I'd like to hear how it went. Thoughts from the from the filmmakers? It was the first time that I was seeing the film on oh, really? the big screen, so it was really, really exciting. Mm -hmm. And it was the very first film uh, that played. So um, it was amazing, but then seeing the other films that came behind, it just felt so mm -hmm. strong, and like we were so proud to be like part of it. Uh, we were really impressed with the program. I think I was telling somebody earlier that uh, the screening just feels so intimate. It's almost like you're hanging out with a bunch of your friends watching your movie together and the reactions were just so vocal. People were like talking at the movie. <laughs> it was awesome. Classic slam dance. I remember I think in the first <laughs> Anarchy screening, in, uh, screening I was like watching, someone was like, I'm gonna throw up. Like in the middle, <laughs> of, the middle of the whole like program. And everyone else was like, yeah, totally dude. Like it's a very, you gotta love the community. I, a lot of people like laughed at my film, which made me really happy because uh, Previously, I haven't screened it in a big, in a big multiplex theater like Slamdance. Um, <laughs> Technically, it feels such like a sweet community, like really like a heart. Like the whole thing has given me such heart. Like everybody's so kind. Mm. Then I felt that immediately because our block was the first thing I went to at the festival. Yeah, no, I really like our block. I was super proud to be with you guys. I'm seriously mm, yeah. was really really like relieved. I was super nervous because sometimes you get paired with stuff that doesn't feel like it makes any sense to you. And uh, yeah, I really I really liked watching the movies. I, I What I didn't expect at all was that we were gonna have Q&As after each film. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Right. And yeah, I, cool. I I've never had that happen. And what's great about it is af after each film, you meet the filmmaker and the questions are so much better. They're not generic and mm -hmm. yeah. it's just really about you and your, your movie and what you've done, so. That's really great. Yeah. yeah. Although I do want to ask one kind of generic question. I thought uh, a similar thread, at least in this round uh, round table, was the acting. I thought it was absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And um, so I wanted to know uh, about how you guys worked with your actors. I really would like to hear from everybody on this. Um, that's a great question. I love working with actors is my favorite thing. So I love to create a space where the actors can really bring what they want to bring and then work from there. Mm -hmm. So Randall, our programmer, asked me Randall. how I did my blocking, which mm -hmm. is a really cool question because it's oh. a very complex question. Mm -hmm. Especially for your piece because it's very, very specific, important bro blocking in such because it's a small mono space. You yeah, know? yeah. And, and I knew going in that I didn't want to do a lot of cutting for this film and kind of leave space for them. Yeah. So the, the challenge, I guess, was to see them do what they needed to do and then place the camera to capture it. Mm -hmm. So in addition to filmmaking, I teach um, creative dream work, which oh. is basically like working, helping artists yeah, yeah. develop a relationship with their unconscious. Oh. And so for me, it's so much about like creating an environment where people have the ability to uh, follow impulses that seem uh, maybe against what you would normally follow. Mm. Like I made everybody on my set do this like opening meditation. Really? <laughs> so of Los what Angeles. Was it? What was I it? mean, what was it? it's just like I would have people circle around and I would like lead them through a thing or I'd like have them soften their bodies, work with their breath because I feel like tension is like the opposite of creativity. 
-hmm. and like I mean it can be creative for sure you can channel it into creativity but mm -hmm. I was really interested in like how do we start every day with um, setting a certain tone. I didn't ha allow cell phones on my set. Ah. Just wasn't super, I mean, some people were like, fuck you. I mean, no, nobody said fuck you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Who said fuck you? Tell us, tell us right um, now. <laughs> so that was one thing, and then I filmed everything. I filmed all our rehearsals. Oh, wow. I had the camera start before anybody knew it was starting and keep going. Um, in the bathroom. Yeah, I mean, changing. I was like intimidated to work with my actors. You know, I have really? these, um, I have these really amazing actors who have done quite a bit of work and worked with a lot of people and I was, yeah, I was intimidated by it, but they're such lovely, generous actresses that I felt um, uh, we like dropped into a good space and yeah, and then always giving them the opportunity to do whatever they wanted, you know, no matter how like rushed we were, like, is there anything you want to try? Similar thing where this was the first thing I acted in my own movie, which I've done before, um, but this was the first one that was I had an idea where I wanted to make it like a play, where I'd shoot most of the movie in um, with two cameras, just me on me, and the actress. Mm. And then when we started to do uh, the shoot, I realized like they rehearse plays for weeks. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I was super sick, which I, I didn't tell Stephanie. Uh, I had like 105 degree fever oh, cool. the whole time. Stephanie, your co-star. Yeah, my co-star. Um, and. I just didn't want her to think I was like breathing sickness on her. She's also like a mother with, and I didn't want her to get sick and like maybe her baby <laughs> no. would get sick and I was so nervous. I was directing in terms of acting by instinct because I was just really sick and trying not to uh, die. The theme of Neuter the Shorts 1 that I noticed is that not only was a specific environment created, but almost like a world, especially with clean blood. Did anyone start with a visual of this? of like the concept of the film? Maybe this is more of a director's question. Yeah, I grew, I grew up religious, I grew up Mormon, and uh, there's one thing um, that in the, in the Mormon religion, there's in, in the atonement, they think Jesus bled from every pore. Mm. Um, the, the, their translation of the Bible is a little differently, so instead of saying like, he sweat as if blood from every pore, which is what a lot of Christian religions believe, uh, I grew up thinking that there was a Jesus that was literally covered in blood from like head to toe, and that it was like an image that I think is insane. I think the craziest balance is um, having a plan and executing that plan with the changes that happens on set. Like I yeah. don't, I don't really know how to, but I do a lot of prep. I actually go through my shots with my DP, and. It's a, it's like I don't change my shots, but I change my shots based on blocking. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, like, no, it totally it's does. It's the yeah. same shot. Yeah. It's like okay, well now they're standing there, so we'll just do that shot from here. But it's I, I, I am a very visual director, and I actually have my shot list on my script, mm. so as if like it's already been edited, so I know which That's smart. take what what lines or what moments are gonna be playing in which shot. The visuals kind of are. They just kind of come into my head, mm -hmm. and I question them to figure out if they mm -hmm. are right mm -hmm. for the for the moment. But mostly, they just kind of come and it makes sense to me and the way that I see it, I guess. Well, this was a fun roundtable. I love all of you, and we're gonna give a big hug to each other at the end. And uh, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Thanks so much, you guys. Thanks so much, Slam Dance TV. Thanks to Slam Dance. Bye.